just seen this thing running towards them. Yeah, this footprint was very fresh. Did you see his face at all? Yep, it is kind of flatty. People don't talk about it when things like that happen. They keep it quiet. Because who's going to believe them? He was a big boy, but eight feet tall, and he was pretty wide, eh? Yeah, ever since I was very young, I've uh, believed in these Sasquatches. People who see them, you know, don't don't bring in UFOs or extraterrestrials or something from the fifth dimension. They say, no, it was just a large, heavy, hair-covered mammal. Stories of Bigfoot or Sasquatch date back hundreds, if not thousands, of years in traditional West Coast cultures. And in the last year, there's been several eyewitness accounts made here in Clackwood Sound. So I joined John Bindernagel, a wildlife specialist who's been documenting these stories for 30 years, and together we went across to Mears Island to see the latest report on this elusive wild mammal. I think people who report Sasquatches, report Sasquatch tracks, <clears throat> have the right to have those uh, reports heard and examined by professional bi biologists such as myself. I think we have a responsibility to examine this evidence. Unfortunately, we're still caught up in this denial that since it's unlikely for an animal resembling an upright gorilla to be here, we seem to have decided, therefore, that it can't be here. They were out hunting in Dennis, and I met they seen this thing running towards them. I, my late uncle took a shot at it. I guess that he had nowhere to go but run by them. Eh? So I guess they were pretty scared at that time. And, uh, when I was very young, I remember this uh, old, old lady here one morning after coming out of the forest from doing her prayers in the forest, she, uh, she said that there was a Sasquatch print, brought uh, several of us over there to see this, this footprint. And uh, it was uh, like someone, like, like if you took your hand and stuck it in the mud and pulled it away, you'd see all, the, uh, all of your, like your fingerprints in there. And you see all the hair sticking on. What I see as my kind of obligation now that I've heard so many reports is to reassure people who make these reports that that's, that's fine. That's a good wildlife sighting. No need to let go of it. No need to fear ridicule, although they still will get ridicule. But uh, this is just very consistent with uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of other reports. Well, before I seen them, this is when I was back in Wood Audi, and I was throwing it over a little bluff there. Eh? And each time I just when I'd come back out here, I'd, I'd smell something real, real funny. Eh? I went further on the road, eh? on the boardwalk there, and I, and I stopped and I, and I seen this big creature. Eh? Or, or standing right where you're standing. Eh? And I stood there a few minutes, like you were just standing not too far from that, that stump over here. Eh? Yeah. And that's where I seen him. It's when he was facing the other way. Eh? I stood here four or five minutes until when he seen me, eh? when, when he turned around, he, he just took off. Eh? Could you see the ears? Ah, oh, no, he was, he was too hairy for me to see. Oh, eh? oh is that right? Eh? Too mm -hmm. hairy to see the ears? Yeah. Well, we heard a report today, which is a very, to me, a very typical Sasquatch report. Uh, an upright, hair-covered creature, huge, uh, I think seven feet tall, we'll describe, wide in the shoulders, flat face, which is very unlike a bear, longish arms, walking off on two feet or, or running off on two feet. That is the essence of a Sasquatch report. Round about the time that Bert was giving his eyewitness account, the media were reporting that an American called Ray Wallace had died and who had confessed to fabricating Sasquatch tracks up and down the coast. Ray Wallace did make a few tracks. I think most of us would have recognized it, those plywood feet, uh, or plywood, the tracks made by the plywood feet. Aboriginal people have had tracks and eyewitness reports going way back uh, th hundreds of years, if not a thousand years, have recorded it in their crests and totem poles and masks. We have historical reports from certainly the 1800s and early 1900s, long before Ray Wallace or any other hoaxer. But we, as a society, seem to want an easy explanation. And, and this is the, an easy explanation that we seem to be accepting. 
The absence of bones is a huge dilemma for most people. If there were bones, we obviously would have quite a different type of discussion about the Sasquatch. It would be right up there alongside grizzly bears, mountain goats, and moose. So what we're having to proceed with now is other evidence, tracks and cast of tracks, eyewitness descriptions and drawings, and trying to make something out of that which would at least help us proceed with a discussion. I, I'm not asking for acceptance, I am asking for serious discussion amongst my, my peers and colleagues. I wanted to get a young person's perspective on what they felt about Sasquatch, so I interviewed my son Ronan, a budding naturalist. He can probably live for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. He can hide here and then when it's hungry he can go out and get clams. Or it can go and get these in the summer when they're slabbers. If it gets thirsty, there's just water in the streams. The Sasquatch might swim over to islands and have and die there, or it might just be it might die and then it might and it might be just because it's sort of a monster and we don't really have monsters here. It might just be a phantom and the bones just disappear.